What's going on, dually people? Back at it again on the single cab com dually conversion. So today we're gonna be working on the front. Pretty much the basics of the front dually conversion is just swapping this rotor over to the dually one. The difference between the dually one is it protrudes or puts an offset out here so that way the dually will fit perfectly. I'm also gonna be lowering it so I have a two inch drop spindle going here and I have a three inch drop spring. But as you can see, the frame is all crusty and dusty and I do plan on using this truck a lot. So we're gonna strip everything down from control arms and then we're gonna get going on grinding the frame down, painting it. So uh, let me start taking stuff apart and we'll update you here in a minute. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how I, I usually take out these coil springs on these uh, OBS GMT 400 trucks. First, I'll make sure I take off, you know, the shock, the tie rod end, the sway bar end link. And then what I'll do is I'll loosen this casting nut up, not all the way off, and I'll either take a pickle fork or I'll take a sledgehammer and I whack it until it, it takes the tension off the taper. And then I'll get under here with a jack, jack it up a little bit, come back over here, and I'm unscrewing the castle nut. Let's get that guy off. Okay, then you got the castle nut right there. Just set it there. And then just ever so gently, we're just going to take and lower the jack down. So that way it can release the tension on the spring. Sometimes you have to get in there and... Like that. Now that's really unsafe. You really should probably use a coil spring compressor, but I don't feel like it. So we'll keep going, lower it all the way down. All the tension's off. Get in there with the foot or pry bar. And the spring should come out. I need my hands for this, so let me put you down here and uh, get that out. All right, the spring's out now. Normally, I would take the rotor off this spindle just to swap for the dually but I am doing drop spindles, so I'm leaving that all as one unit. So I just gotta get in here and get the two upper control arm bolts and then the two lower. So now it'll be stripped. It'll kind of look, oh well, it will look like how this side is. You see, I have everything already stripped off and then I can start going ahead and clean it. So I can have it painted, start putting on the new suspension and get this truck together again all right we can finally start putting stuff back together on this dually conversion as you can see the frame is all nicely coated now i mean there was 30 years worth of worth of grease on this frame so it really wasn't rusty but it took a lot of cleaning a lot of cleaning so we'll kind of go over some stuff really quick here I am waiting on some other parts that are coming in this afternoon. So we're probably just going to be getting the control arms, springs, and spindles on this morning. So we got the new uppers. We have the coated up lowers. Now, I'm not too happy with these lowers. They just didn't clean up as good as I would like them to. So I think before I actually put the truck on the road... I'm just going to go ahead and order some new ones just to have them, put them on, be fresh, just like everything else. So right now we're going to be working on getting the upper control arm, the lower control arm, the spring, and our two-inch drop spindle. So right now we're running a two-inch drop spring and a two-inch spindle. So right now I'm just doing four in the front uh, until I have... The engine the transmission the fenders all the front end stuff on then i can determine if i need to drop it more i want to start somewhere nice so that way it is functional i want more functional over form with this uh truck build so let's uh see if i can set you guys up here and kind of put some stuff together hopefully with it being a drop coil we don't have to use a spring compressor if we do, we do. So let's uh, give me a second here to 
fix it and see if I can get uh, get me recording me putting this together. All right, let's uh, start with putting the lower control on. Make sure we got the crux side going on. This hole is going to be your sway bar link, and that's going to go towards the front of the frame rail. And make sure you have both bolts are different sizes. I mean, maybe you're more organized than me. So this will go towards the front of the frame. This will go towards the back of the frame when bolting it up. All right, so let's get this control arm in. We'll just kind of grab it and shove it up in there. Sometimes when trying to align it, you might need a, something to kind of center it a little bit. So, get in there with like a screwdriver. Or, kind of wiggle it around so you get in there and fight with it. stuff over and let's get a so you can see the bolts not all the way in I'm just gonna take a rubber mallet and just tap it in it's got taper on there which allows you to hammer them in. So you're not gonna actually screw the threads up. I mean, you don't wanna use no five pound sledgehammer or nothing. Just a good little rubber mallet. So there's the lower control arm on. I'm not gonna put the nuts on yet because I wanna leave it loose. So now we're gonna move to the upper. Hopefully this one goes a little bit smoother. You guys should be able to see a little bit better. So we'll get one of my bolts here. Hopefully it don't fall. Try and do this one-handed. Kind of push it in. You can see we're just trying to line it up in there. And what I meant when I tap it in, you see that little taper right there so you can knock it in without having to worry. Get it in Just a little bit more. There we go. Just wiggle it around till it goes. Um, I still have the block original plates in there that locks out for adjustment. I know once. I know once I go to the alignment shop, they're gonna have to change all that. But I'm not too worried. And where's the second bolt? Right, let's get the second bolt driven in here. Just wiggle it a little bit. Get a little rubber mallet. Put it in. And just so I don't lose the nuts, I'm just gonna put them. Just kind of thread them on, nothing tight. And let's get the other one. 
like so. Now you can see they're nice and loose. They'll be nice and movable for us to get the spring in and get the spindle on. See, I like taking the I'm taking the spindle and putting it on the lower control arm. Let's get that cast it off. Just get that on like so. Put that on like so. Just a little bit. We don't need nothing crazy right now. And we got the coil spring and make sure we got the casting off on the top so that way we're not trying to fight with with that when we're trying to put it together. So I'm probably gonna have to put you guys down. So essentially you got this little groove right here for the coil. And I don't know if you can see, but there's this little indentation. You want to make sure the end of the coil is sitting on there, as well as up in this pocket. There is like a groove that comes and sits that helps center the spring. So you want to make sure you do that. That's definitely going to be two hands, and there's not really a good way to film that. So make sure when you're putting it in, and some, sometimes you need a coil spring compressor, which is no big deal. I'm going to try to do it without it. So make sure the pigtail of the coil lines up with this groove, and then make sure this part of the coil is sitting in the pocket in the frame so let me do that and i'll bring beer all right so i got in i can explain it now to you guys so when lowering any of these gmt 400 trucks or realistically anything with uh you know coil spring and control arms you know just be safe the springs are deadly that's number one thing i've always been taught is uh well one is don't piss around and to make sure you're being safe with whatever you're doing or the safest you can be so i just kind of put the jack under the control arm area in a nice good flat spot where the on the basis uh of it lined it up with the top up here in that pocket put my pushed it in and slowly raised the jack until the top of the spindle was able to take the upper ball joint so we got it seated with the taper got the cast nut uh cast nut on on both both ends so so it's on this that's essentially us doing the like a four inch drop now you could just do a two inch you could just use your stock spring do a two inch drop you could there's lots of different variations to get drop if I need more drop, like I was saying just a minute or two ago, a couple seconds, uh, with the lower control arm. They make three inch, two inch drop lower control arms. So if I feel like I need more drop, I can go ahead and just order the lower control arm. You know, if I really want to get crazy, I could bag it, but we're not bagging this one. So right now we got a four inch drop. Now to do the rest of the dually conversion, as I was saying, is essentially you just need the dually rotor you need the dually rotor so it matches with how the dually wheel will offset will work now that's part of having the parts truck the rotors were in spec and tolerance pretty nice i still have to take them off the truck but i'm waiting on my dust backing plate which honestly probably won't be a couple seconds for you guys once i edit everything and then we can talk more about this conversion but right now we got the spring, the control arms and the spindles on, which is a big start to making this uh, a functioning truck again. I'm going to go ahead and throw the stock stock shocks in. I don't think anyone wants to see that. And you just put the bolt through the top, put the nut on. You got the two bolts from the bottom. And then I got the sway bar to put on and the end links. I don't know if anyone really wants to care to see that. They're just two u-clamps on each side of the frame the sway bar goes through and then you got the end links so i'm gonna go ahead and start putting all that back together and when we come back hopefully i'll have more stuff for you here in a second all right off camera i did the other side getting the spring spindles control arms in then i took a moment and i decided to throw on the anti-sway bar 
the idler arm, the center link, and the inner and outer tie rods. They're just loosely in. You know, the best thing to do is when you take apart one of these trucks or anything with tie rods, is try to keep them together like this. This is the old ones. So that way you can rough in your alignment. I mean, you know, you're obviously going to have to take it to get an alignment anyways, but at least with using the old ones, you can kind of eyeball it and make it drivable over to the alignment rack. So that's what I did here. They're just loosely in. I'm going to sit here and actually measure. And All right. Up. Almost to the final stretch here. I want to talk about doing this dually conversion. So now you can see the dually rotor, how much, you know, more space you have for the offset. Now, something, some things to be noted when doing this. Make sure you have the dually specific caliper. I fought for like two hours wondering why the calipers wouldn't work. Well, that's because I was using using the single one. Forgot that you need to use a dual rear wheel caliper. It's literally a quarter inch difference. The dual one's bigger and that's all it needs. So put this on, repack the wheel bearings, tightened it, made sure it's all good, nice and perfectly how it should be. Got the caliper on, now we can put the wheel on. And you can see it as a dual, dually for the first time. Come over here, I don't know if I could do this one hand. We'll try, why not? Bear with me here. Uh -huh. No, probably can't. Give me one sec. Just put the dual wheel on now. I just got two lug nuts just for testing. But now you can see now. Now it's a dually. Now we can go ahead and actually lower it. And you can actually see how low this is going to be. Now I just gotta get the springs to settle. Now you can kind of see how low it's actually gonna be. So it's a three inch drop spindle, two inch spring. To be corrected, I rechecked with my purchase order. But now it's, it's here. I ended up not using these dust shields I've purchased. For some reason, they're having issues with rubbing on the edge, so we're not running them. Fine, for now, we're just still in the mock-up stage, but now you can see we got the five in the front. We make our way to the back. Now we have the seven in the rear. I don't know really how good of a profile you'll be able to see with it, but it is a dually now. I mean, it's not that bad of a conversion if you can get the parts for a reasonable price and if you want a dually truck. So that's going over the front suspension. If you want more detailed stuff or have questions, I can make it like a short video and go over a little bit more. But now we're on to putting this back together. I don't know what the next step is, if I'm going to C-notch it next or if I'm going to paint the firewall because we are doing a full paint color change on this thing. So we'll see, we'll see what works best, but that's where we're at right now. Comment, like, subscribe, and tune in for more uh, dually conversion build. Thanks.